Lee, this is an incredible machine. This Echo Speed, it's huge. It's big, but it's the smaller end of the range. So this is a four meter table. We do four, six and eight meters in this particular machine range. In simple terms, it's a super fast profiling machine for airframe components in aluminium. I've seen a huge drum of swarf. Uh, is that to illustrate just how much metal this thing can remove? That's less than a minute's worth of machining. Oh my God, right, let's go and have a look inside. And clear to see when in here, Lee, this is all about metal removal. The fact that you've got the part here almost in a vertical position, is that just so the chips are just falling away as, you, as you're ripping? Absolutely, so we load the component flat, we rotate the part up, bring it into the machine. So as I said earlier, four meter long plates or up to four meter long plates on this variant. And you can see that the shape of these pockets, these are complex five axis pockets, but typical of an aircraft rib type component. Okay, so give our audience a, a flavor of the speed of what you're machining here, the amount of metal being removed. Sure, well, when, when we're roughing, we're cutting at uh, 28,000 revs, 30 millimeter deep, so straight in, full slot cut. We're cutting, we're pulling about seven liters of material a minute when we're roughing. And when we're finishing, we're actually finishing at feed rates of 20 meters. With, uh, with five axis movements simultaneous. I mean, how do you cope with everything that's going on at that speed? All the swarf, all the, you know, the environment here in the machine, filtration and all of that. These are really important aspects as well, aren't they? But when you cut it, it sounds like there's a machine gun going off in here. You can imagine the volume of material we're removing. You've got huge swarf evacuation. You've got a very compact machine for the size of component that you've got on there. You've got a very rigid setup. The spindle is very close to the workpiece. And to keep it going, important to mention there's a pallet changer on this machine as well. So one out, one in. One out, one in, or a multi-pallet system, or multi-machine multi-pallet system. So the, the options are endless. But what are you actually showing here, Lee, um, today? What can people see when they come here to these tech days? What people are going to see today is very fast roughing, very fast finishing. But what we're also doing is we're using an ultrasonic measuring device from Hexagon to measure the position of the, this pocket base relative to the underside. So when you've got large components and you've got distortion, sometimes they're not sitting completely flat. So we can, we, can, we can take a cut, we can measure, and then we can adaptively produce the pocket bases so you've got a perfectly geometrically correct component. Now this is a spindle that I've not seen anything like this before. Um, tell me about it. Well, look, this is a, it's a 30,000 rev spindle. This particular one's 120 kilowatts. There is a 150 kilowatt version available as, as well. It's a HSK 100 tool interface, but with a, an 80 millimeter flange because the radial forces are so high, you would pull a standard HSK 63 out the spindle. And there's a lot of freedom in and around that spindle, which is really important, isn't it, with, when you're looking at the conditions that you're trying to, you know, the parts you're trying to make. For sure, and, and, and there's a big difference between this configuration and most other five axis machines that use two rotary axes. So one of your rotary axes is always the, the slowest part of the five axis simultaneous move. So here, we've got three linear axes, we'll show you in a second to how it works. You've got one G acceleration, which means your tool has got extremely fast agility and rigidity. So now we can actually see here the spindle and how it's made. And this is the fascinating bit for me as an engineer. Just tell us about the, the construction and how it all works. Well, you, you can see the, the spindle sits in, 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 the, in the front of this unit here. So this is what we call the Z3 head. And what we've got is three linear drives that operate independently. So a bit like a bar stool. If you move a leg of a bar stool, the seat would, would tip. And that's exactly what's happening here. So you've got no rotaries, just a 1G acceleration linear in three positions, and that's where you get your five axis movement and, from. And how does it know where, the, where it is? How does the edge of the cutting tool know where well, it you've is? Got, you've, you've got direct measurement, measuring systems on each of the axes, and then there's a lot of clever mathematics in the machine to tell you exactly where that tool okay, is. Okay, we'll go round the back because it's great to see that no too. Problem. Before we do, we said earlier, this is the amount of chips the machine can uh, produce in less than a minute, Lee. Less than a minute. Unbelievable. What's it? 120 kilowatt, obviously, the spindle, 160 litres. Unbelievable. Let's have a look around here. So then from a back-end perspective, again, you can just see how this wonderful master of piece of engineering is uh, configured. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, it's big, it's robust, 
It's very dynamic and it's very accurate and, and they're the key attributes. But what you've also got as an advantage here is if you imagine the spindle sat in the front of the, uh, the unit there, you've got a lot of services into that spindle and they float freely in here. So there's no traps for any of the electrics, any of the, the, the cabling, the, 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 the pneumatics, the, the coolant, they're all free freely floating around in and the back And are you able to here. monitor the stresses and the strains on the spindle so you can actually see how much freedom and how easy this is in operation? Well, we, we monitor the, the, uh, the cutting conditions through the spindle. So we, we monitor the forces, we monitor the temperatures, we monitor the vibration and, and, and that type of thing. So we've got complete control over the process.